So here we have Mr. David uh, Beveres, who uh, is an investor living in China for years, and uh, he's recently uh, written a novel about China, and it's actually about what he wants to explain and to tell the new French president the uniqueness of the development model of China. So hello, Mr. David Bowers. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us about your book. Well, this idea came uh, just from the fact that I've been living in Hong Kong for now more than five years. Okay. And I've been witnessing what I call the new China. So how China is, uh, I think, reorganizing its um, organization, both, I think, politically, economically, and from a society point of view. All two countries, France and China, culturally, actually much closer to each other mm -hmm. than people believe. And what I ask him to do is to build what I call the, the new digital Silk Road, mm -hmm. which is at a time when clearly sees that the US will not open its technology as much as before to China. Mm -hmm. China has a productivity problem. It needs to improve its productivity to raise wages and to have an acceleration in domestic consumption. This will come from technology and services. And in France, we have lots of them. Mm -hmm. And I say there is a unique opportunity for the new French president that has been elected for five years mm -hmm. to offer to China a kind of win-win relationship. So now, Mr. Barris, could you tell us about the most interesting and impressive story in your novel of what you've seen and experienced in China? Uh, I think one of the biggest surprises we're going to get in China over the next 10 years is going to be on the environmental front, where I think China is going to surprise the world mm -hmm. on naming pollution the public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. And I think we Western people, we have forgotten what London looked like in 1952, where everybody was wearing masks, yeah. or where, uh, for example, in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. In the 1970s, people were saying you should sell your real estate because no human being will be able to live in Los Angeles in the future. Mm -hmm. And actually, it took uh, uh, the UK, if you think, uh, around 30 years, mm -hmm. because it's only in the 80s that the mm -hmm. problem was solved. And my bet is that China is going to address the issue much quicker, and that in 10 years' time, the sky in Beijing will be blue parade. You see that the government is not in denial of those problems. The government puts the problem on the table and says, here are the corrective measures we are taking. Mm -hmm. And some of them are going to take a very long time, so pollution cannot be solved mm -hmm. overnight. But you see that now, uh, look at the COP21 that China ratified here in Paris, where you know, we are talking today. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that China is acting. This is, this is what I really impresses me in China. There is a methodology mm -hmm. of the reform. And it basically is three, three words, it's a vision, it's a determination, and it's courage. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the Western world, those three ingredients, unfortunately, are missing among most Western politicians. China, the Chinese government has the courage to take measures that are unpopular, mm -hmm. that are tough in the short term, mm -hmm because they think that it's good for the long term, it's good for the next, for the next generation. Yeah. And the current generation will, be, will accept some pains, mm -hmm. but only on the belief that the future generation will benefit. Be 